Antoine Marker. Audemars Piguet. AP is a brand that's infused itself in pop culture. From the red carpets to the big screen, even in Beyonce's lyrics, AP is a brand that struck a chord with every generation. How did this family-owned business rise to become the powerhouse it is today? So in the beginning, there was Jules Audemars and Edward Piguet. Both watchmakers, they took two different sides of the business. Jules Audemars focused more on the high-end complications, while Mr. Piguet focused more on the business side and management, but also would you know, regulate movements as well, both being master watchmakers. So from the beginning in 1875 up until around 1892, they were making some very complicated watches, very unique pieces. But something really special happened in 1892. They made a mini repeater. In fact, the first mini repeater that would be in a wristwatch. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a mini repeater is a watch that has a slide on it. You slide the slide and it chimes to let you know the hours, the quarter hours, and the minutes. What's so hard about this is you still not only need the energy to run your watch and keep it telling accurate time, but you need all that energy to hammer the two gongs on the side. Not only do you need to hammer the gongs, but you need the music elements to resonate very, very cleanly. You know, imagine you're, it's in the 1800s, you're, you're in your dark room or castle, wherever you may be, and you chime this watch, you want to be able to hear all the different tones very, very easily. So in the early 1920s, things pick up speed a little bit. Designers start coming to a AP. AP starts making really, really cool watches for a lot of well-known brands internationally, such as Tiffany & Co., Bulgari, Cartier. Everybody loved what Audemars brought to the table. After the mini repeater invention in 1892, Audemars and Piguet be became to be a little bit more respected in the watchmaking world and also spread a little bit more internationally, especially during the early 1920s. A lot of Audemars Piguet design watches being rebranded for many you know, famous jewelers and other brands and being sold across the world. This really helped propel the brand and show them not only as a manufacturer, but a great case designer and a uh, really in demand. Around this time, they also came out with the first Jump Power wristwatch, which was a watch that had a digital dial that switched on every hour instantaneously. Again, another feat of engineering because you need a brake that actually stops the disc and then transfers over the power. They also, a few years down the road, made the thinnest pocket watch caliber out there. And then, to me, which is really, really important, I think around 1940s, they made the first skeletonized wristwatch. This is really important because this technique and this style of skeletonized watches continues until today, and AP still in my opinion, is one of the best at executing that art form. A few years later, it also created the thinnest wristwatch out of the time. What was really cool about this is for a brand that was still in its little shell, it just kept hitting milestone after milestone and creating inventions that you know shook the watch world and in this era there were a lot of brands who were competing you know and steel hard and steel i always say so you had a great house like on mars Gay, surrounded like many other houses and everybody's vying to be the thinnest the best the most accurate in 1972 the royal oak was born and this would be the one model that would define the rest of Auto Mars Piguet history. The Royal Oak at the time came out when all wristwatches were, for the most part, on leather, especially if you consider it a nice watch. There were a few sports watches out there on a metal bracelet, but the Royal Oak was the first watch to be designed on an integrated metal bracelet, flush with the case, seemingly is one, and it was a luxury watch. Nobody thought steel and luxury could work together. This was two opposite thinkings. But the Royal Oak and Audemars Piguet really defined the industry or redefined the industry and, and created a whole new subset of watches, a luxury sports watch. A watch that was not only handmade and beautiful, but something that you could wear every day and not be afraid of it being too delicate or, or, or you hurting it. It was meant, you know, like the Royal Oak itself, you know, the strong uh, tree or the strong ship to traverse any sea and do anything, any challenge that was presented to it, the Royal Oak is meant to, to drive on through. So with the creation of the Royal Oak in the 70s, not a hit, by the way, when it first came out. It really kind of 
created a lot of fanfare around the brand. There are a lot of people who really didn't understand what AP was doing, but then there was a lot of people who really got it and who really were interested in this new brand that had really different design philosophies. And around this time, you saw AP not only continue to produce the Royal Oak, but still have really cool, you know, grand complications and very, very complicated timepieces as well. Now, the Royal Oak would see a lot of different uh, versions and revisions throughout throughout its whole lifetime. Definitely seen it with many complications from chronographs to uh, mini repeaters, uh, perpetual counters. But they wanted to take it one step further and they created Royal Oak Offshore, a luxury brand, a high-end watchmaker, digging in to that, that sports fashion realm, something where a lot of brands stayed away from. Most brands at this time want to stay clean, classy, go for you know the ultra luxury, the ultra refined class. Audemars was not afraid to dig into the people who wanted to you know have nice things but enjoy them as well. Who wouldn't be afraid to spend what it took to get into Royal Oak Offshore and wanted to you know take that watch anywhere with them, whether it be you know yachting in Ibiza or driving a Ferrari in Milan. They wanted to have fun. Even Gerald Genta, the designer of the original Royal Oak, wasn't pleased with with it at first. It was bigger, it was bulkier, the bracelets were a little bit more curved and you know he felt that his original creation had been altered or made a monster. But in my opinion, it was the natural progression of the watch and the brand. Automars isn't a brand that just caters to the individual who goes to work every day and you know sits in the finest dining rooms. They're there for their venture. That's what the Royal Oak Offshore was. In the pursuit of perfection, nothing can stop you. And that is one of the things that Audemars Piguet really realizes you know, every day. Another peak that Audemars climbed first was dual time. In 1989, they made the first dual time caliber that had two time zones within one movement, making one of the most useful uh, complications out there, especially if you're a traveler. You didn't need two rotors, you didn't need multiple things going on. You set both times and then you kept going. Life goes on and time kept spinning. In the year 2000, on the turn of millennium, they created a watch that had the equation of time complication in it. This is a complication that tells you the true time of every day. Uh, every day is unique in its own way. The rotation between the moon, the sun, and the earth is a little bit different. So not every day is a true 24 hours. The equation of time complication tells you that exact time, the true time, for the exact day that you're on. This is a crazy complication that takes so much math and engineering. It's really, it's crazy to think that you even, they even put it into a watch. But that's the thing about Audemars Piguet. They don't do things because it should be done or it's a likely scenario. They do things because they want to do it and they want to keep pushing the envelope on the whole industry. And that's why they're one of my favorite brands. I'm CQ of Watchbox, and that's the history of Audemars Piguet.